Hello, everybody. My name is Dr. Palacios, and I'm going to talk about nutrition in life regarding the nutritional stages in our lives. So without getting much into it, let's get started. So in this presentation, I just want to talk about the objectives on what are the nutritional needs on our stages through life. And as you can see, I've listed all of the topics that I'm going to touch upon very briefly, because again, I just want to give you an introductory information regarding our different stages and what are some nutritional needs that we need to be aware of in each of these stages. Let's get started into our first stage of life, infancy. Now, there is a stage before that, which is the first four weeks of life, which is considered a newborn. Um, but when it comes to nutritional needs, I'm going to put that a little bit aside and more work towards more the later stage. So infancy is considered to be from one month to one year old. Now, in this stage, what you want to do is make sure that the infant is getting enough breast milk more than formula. Now, why breast milk is preferable? Again, it is, first of all, more natural. But second of all, and scientifically proven, is that the baby is getting immune antibodies directly uh, from the milk to the baby. And this allows better gastrointestinal growth. Um, another thing that may happen too with formula is that constipation is another problem that could occur long term. Um, now, you may introduce solid foods to infants and when they are reaching the age of six to eight months, but you want to do it obviously in a puree form and only introduce one food at a time just to see if they have any reactions. Uh, when it comes to growth, this is a nice little chart to kind of understand how much the infant should grow. Uh, remember that because they're growing, they're going to be very hungry. And by six months, they should weigh about two times as much as they were born. By one year, they should weigh about three times as much. And then by reaching the weight of 17 to 18 pounds, uh, they should be able to hold their heads up. Now, risk of deficiency that could happen in infants, regardless of, you know, care and love from the mother, are these two, iron and vitamin D. So it's important to have some form of supplementation or at least check uh, with the doctor to see if there is any kind of nutritional deficiencies in those uh, regions. Um toddlerhood. So as you know, toddlers are those fun years where the, the child or the toddler is learning to go through cognitive development. So here is a very crucial moment where they're learning uh, behaviors and their brain is growing ever more. So obviously they go through a phase of rebellion uh, where they refuse some foods or they may want to overindulge in other foods. And the same thing can go with drinks. They may have too little or too much of something. And it's important to keep track of their behavior with foods. So again, risk of deficiencies that toddlers may go through include iron, vitamin D, calcium, and essential fatty acids. Now, calcium, obviously we know because of um, bone growth, which also includes vitamin D, but then essential fatty acids we're talking about or DHEA or EPAs, which are the forms of anti-inflammatory fatty acids and developmental fatty acids that work for brain development. So it's important to get those in the toddler years. And I mean, just throughout our lives, but it's important for that specific age. The next age is going to be childhood. So on our big spectrum, this is from year three to 11. 
Now again, the child is growing, so we're going to see a lot of growth spurts, which means that they will need to be having their adequate sleep, which also means that they will be eating more as they grow older. So it's important as, as they're getting their nutrients and caloric intake that you're also addressing their intake of calcium, protein, iron, and vitamin D. Again, vitamin D and calcium are for bone. Protein is just for overall growth. And then iron, it's essentially for everything, but mostly for healthy development of blood. Adolescence from years 10 to 19 is obviously a huge shift of hormones it's in males and females. Now, there is a surge of appetite because, again, they're still developing. They're still going through some growth spurts. Now, that doesn't mean that females don't need to have as a high caloric intake, and I'll get to that in a bit. Now, some of the health risks is iron deficiency is a huge issue that could happen in menstruating females. So be very careful to check on that and, you know, understand the process of their periods. Eating disorders, it's another issue that obviously nutrition cannot address, but if it is something that you're noticing, um, you may have to consult your uh, mental health counselor or psychiatrist to address that condition. Now, another thing I put here, caloric needs may shift through the different ages. So from ele age 11 to 14, you're going to have from 18 to 2,400 calories per day. Again, this is daily. And then after they each reach higher, as they're getting older, they're going to need to have more calories. Now, moving on into adulthood. Now, I put it all in one category because... In reality, adulthood can be put into three stages, early adulthood, middle adulthood, and then late adulthood. And then some books may even consider it into other categories. Now, when it comes to nutrition, some of the concerns that many adults go through, especially in developed countries, is obesity and overweight. And you may be wondering, now, why is that an, a problem of malnutrition? Well, I want to make it clear that just because you're overweight, it does not mean that you're getting the nutrients in your body. So you may be overweight and obese, but still be lacking nutritional and nutrients in your body. And some of these include vitamin D, B vitamins, low fiber intake, and also low intake of antioxidants that come from fruits and vegetables. So if you're an adult going through a pro going through this and wondering about your nutritional state, ask yourself this, am I having enough of this in my diet? If not, again, feel free to consult me or talk to someone who's an expert in nutritional counseling. Um, now I put this stage for special populations because this is not uh, not something everybody goes through, including women. Again, this is concern for women, but it doesn't mean that every woman is going to get pregnant, be lactating, or even go through menopause. But the majority, or at least a high number of them, will. Now, for pregnancy, this is just a superficial intake of what pregnancy and nutrition touch upon. So, there's much more to talk about, but I just want to talk about the main things. Now, pregnancy, some of the concerns that pregnant women need to be aware of is to have enough calcium, iron, vitamin D, essential fatty acids, again, brain development, methylated folate, which again allows division of fetal cells. Another thing, folate is considered vitamin B9 and protein. Now, some of the risks of pregnant conditions are gestational diabetes, which again could lead to a baby being born overweight. Uh, Foodborne illnesses is a very common, it's not as common in developed countries, but it is something important to keep in mind uh, because it could lead to uh, unwanted abortions, 
or death of a fetus if the illness, if the bacteria gets too far into the body. And then again, eating disorders can also be a common issue in pregnant women. Now, after the woman has given birth and she's lactating, remember that you're giving all your nutrients to the baby. Therefore, you need to also be increasing your caloric intake. You need to be eating a little more, but of course, you want to be eating foods high in protein and fats, especially essential fatty acids. So you're providing the, the infant with the correct amount of, well, not the correct, but at least the right amount of nutrients. And, and you're also not getting depleted from your own nutrients. After that's over, you know, years pass, and then women go through a stage of menopause where their ovaries do no, no longer make eggs and their main estrogen levels, which is estradiol, decrease in the body. And that can increase certain medical conditions. And one of this is osteoporosis because estrogen has a high affinity to bones and allows growth stability. So it is important that women with menopause increase their diet in protein and other forms of nutrients that I listed here. So lysine, proline, and glycine, those are forms of amino acids, which again are pieces of proteins, uh, vitamin D, vitamin C, vitamin K, calcium, and trace minerals will also provide bone support and connective tissue repair and overall good health. So these are important takes to keep in mind but again, this isn't exactly a population where everybody's going to go through. However, this is just the surface of what I, I could talk about. If you'd like me to talk more about this, feel free to let me know and I could, I could expand more on this. And then finally, we're going to reach the elderly, which is 65 years and older. Now, at this stage, a decaying body begins to decay in organ function, which unfortunately is gonna allow to many medical conditions in the future and um, you know, could lead to worse complications. Now, some of the signs of malnutrition, which means that the individual is not getting enough nutrients include easy bruising, hair loss, teeth loss, weight loss, and sarcopenia. Now, sarcopenia means muscle loss. So it's important that you keep, as an elderly person, an active life and enough nutrients so you can avoid or at least delay these types of signs and malnutrition in general. Another concerns to be aware of include poor digestion, uh, which is coming from low hydrochloric acid, which eventually is gonna lead to low vitamin B12 in the system. Agusia, which means lack of taste. So the taste buds, the nerves in the taste buds begin to die out. Therefore, the person may not have the same sensations of taste as they did 10 years ago. So that could lead to an excess uses of spices, salts, and other things. And then again, they may lose function in muscle, which could allow them to not chew well, or also loss of teeth. Um, so common deficiencies to keep in mind, you know, make sure they're getting enough protein, vitamin D and vitamin B12, as I mentioned with the poor digestion. So that is all I wanna cover for today. And I wanna thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions or comments regarding this presentation on nutrition, feel free to let me know. But again, remember that this is just a very simple introduction of nutritional needs throughout our life. Feel free to let me know if you want to work together. I'll be happy to answer any questions and I'll see you next time.